Welcome to NAMLAB. We are a non-profit research institute that belongs to TU Dresden. Our goal is to find new materials for the semiconductor industry to be introduced into future digital technologies. We begin by fabricating simple capacitors and transistors, the tiny components of computer chips. Graduate students from around the world are helping in this effort. Today we will show how we fabricate capacitors. So let's do the simplest version of our capacitor structure. So we just take a silicon wafer, we deposit a bottom electrode, then a dielectric or a ferroelectric layer, and then a top electrode through a shadow mask. Our standard capacitor structures have a conductive bottom and top electrode made out of titanium nitride and a ferroelectric layer made out of hafnium zirconium oxide. Each of these layers is about 30 nanometers thick. Capacitors are processed in a clean room. Here, we have only 8,000 small particles in one cubic meter of air. This is achieved by circulating the air through filters in the ceiling of our clean room. To avoid bringing dirt and particles into the clean room, we need to cover our clothes and body with a clean room suit. So normally we deposit our capacitors on a 4 times 4 square centimeter silicon wafer. We can also use an 150 millimeter wafer. Or we could even use a 200 millimeter wafer. Yeah, but we can also use a 300 millimeter wafer. Wow. But let's use an 150 millimeter wafer today. Okay, shall we? Let's go. Let's have a look at the first processing step. Thirty atomic layers of titanium nitride, which means about 10 nanometers, are deposited by sputter deposition. Titanium nitride is deposited when the titanium target is bombarded in an argon-2 plasma by ionized argon atoms. They knock titanium atoms out of the titanium target, and these titanium atoms fly through the vacuum to the silicon wafer. They react here with the nitrogen atoms to form a titanium nitride layer. In the next step, a dielectric or ferroelectric layer will be deposited by atomic layer deposition. Here, a process cycle is performed to deposit 30 atomic layers of hafnium oxide. First, a hafnium-containing molecule is adsorbed on the titanium nitride bottom electrode. Then, an oxygen-containing precursor gas, like water or ozone, is introduced into the chamber to remove all hafnium precursor byproducts that are not hafnium. If you perform this cycle a hundred times, hafnium oxide with 30 atomic layers is formed. Now, we take out the wafer piece and go back to the titanium nitride sputter deposition tool. This time, we place a shadow mask on top of our wafer. Only regions where holes are in the shadow mask allow a titanium nitride deposition on the substrate. The round holes in the mask are 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters in size, which are later used as a top electrode to connect our capacitors. The thin film capacitor fabrication is now finished. We need to heat the whole wafer with the capacitor on top to convert the amorphous dielectric layer to a crystalline ferroelectric layer. Rapid thermal anneals employ hot lamps to quickly heat the wafer to temperatures in the range of 400 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Small crystallites grow to larger ones during the anneal. Now the ferroelectric capacitors are ready to be measured. Microscopes are one way to look at the final sample. So these are the top electrodes that you deposited. They are more or less the size of a human hair. And if we further zoom in, here you can see your ferroelectric layer. Uh, here you see the grains, they are more or less 20 to 40 nanometers wide. This is more or less 100 atoms in a row. Nice, should we have a look at it in the atomic force microscope? Sure. So with this measurement, we are scanning the surface, the sample surface, and with a needle and taking the topography of our grains. So this is how the full scan looks like. And here you can clearly see the grain size. 
So, have you seen how cool those grains were? Should we measure the crystalline phase tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. We still have to check the thickness and the density of our film. Right, and maybe we should also do some electrical measurements. Definitely, I have to do that. I want to check the capacitance of our dots and maybe even the electrical polarization. Right, and maybe we can also check the leakage, the resistivity. I would also do some retention measurements on it just to see how good our devices came out. Very good idea, and maybe we do some Raman. I mean, I would also do some imprint measurements, some endurance. I mean, who knows? We could even keep on going with more pyro, piezoelectric, wow. who knows? <laughs>